I was the one to worship. I forgot to put my mic on. <laughs> so, <laughs> how's everybody doing tonight? You doing good? Wow. I want to let you all know I put deodorant on today. I don't know why y'all hanging all, all back there and all. Anyhow, moving right along. Praise the Lord. It's good to have everybody here tonight. Isn't it good to worship God? Isn't He worthy of all of our praise? Hallelujah. God is so good. So good. So good. Well, Brother Merlin, serving in children's tonight, so uh, I'm going to give a few announcements before we get going. Uh, so first of all, uh, next week is uh, 4th of July week. So most of you know that if you've been around here long enough, if you have not been around here long enough, a 4th of July week, uh, we take the midweek off of 4th of July. It's halfway through the middle uh, of the year. And a lot of people are either going on vacation or something. Well, they, they used to in the past. I don't know if they are now with the whole COVID and everything thing going on. But uh, I don't know what's open, what's not open. But uh, so we are taking the 4th of July uh, midweek services off. So next week, no Wednesday night up north and then no Thursday evening uh, down south here. And then, of course, we do have the 4th of July that's still scheduled uh, as of what I know right now. Is, is there a confirmation that it's still scheduled? Everybody knows it's still going on. Is that right? No cancellations? Okay. Uh, so that is going to be going on. I believe we're doing a carry-in, right? Starting around 7 o'clock. And so uh, bring your good food and we'll all have fun together and then watch the fireworks at 10 o'clock right behind the property here. So great place to watch fireworks. Uh, and so I do also wanted to say uh, also, um, so for July and August, summer months, uh, we are not going to be having armor. Usually we do take the summer months off. Now, I, usually it's June, July and August. Uh, but since I did not meet with the men of armor because of the COVID, I wanted to meet with them all last month. And so we had a great meeting in June, but July and August, we will not be having armor, but we still will have our birthdays, uh, birthday celebrations for July and August birthdays uh, next month at our house. I believe it's the 12th, I believe is the date on that. So the second uh, um, Sunday of the month. And uh, I, usually we skip months, but if you guys all remember the whole COVID thing through everything like up up in the air and how many of you guys know this has just been a really weird year for everything right yeah. you just had to rearrange this that and everything else and so um but we are going to be doing that so we'll have july and august birthdays then in july uh at our house so i believe that's uh, pretty much uh, about it unless there's any other announcements that you know of that's going on no nope, no okay so i do want to also encourage everybody remember 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 uh see now you know, since we had to take all that time off, we haven't had a chance for everybody to start filling the jar up like we need to, right? So do remember this change for change, right? We are going to be sending this out to missions. So I want to encourage you, you know, if you're, if you're one of those um, electronic people only, that everything you do is electronic, you don't, you don't use cash, you don't do whatever, well, then go get some change. Go to the bank or get something. Get some change so you can sow into missions around the world. And remember, we're not just doing pennies this year, but we're doing any coins uh, whatsoever, uh, as long as they're American, that is. Uh, uh, we, got, we got to do that. We, we had some Canadian coins last year that did not go, did not pass at the bank. And so, but it has to be American. But I want to encourage you, do not forget the change for change because we want to send that and impact people around the world. Amen. And, you know, the thing about it is, is... Um, I think most people probably are aware of this, but you remember back in 2008 and 2009 when the economy was, was taking a major hit. Do you guys all remember that? Well, when that happened, there were tons of missionaries that had to come back home uh, because their support dried up. Or, or I'll just put it this way, people quit giving. And, you know, people start, they kept giving to their church. Well, actually, there were a lot of churches that hurt really bad, too. Uh, during that time. But the thing about it is, is, is um, a lot of people, they will consider missionaries, Judy, you might be able to back me up on this. A lot of times they'll consider missionaries, you know, it, it, supporting, op, but it's just kind of a side thing. And boy, a lot of them got hurt. And um, I have not heard of this right now, but I would be shocked if this is not the case, if a lot of missionaries have been uh, pulled back some of the some of the money that's been pulled back just because the whole COVID and everything that's been happening with people. I would not ha, has has that happened? Oh, it has happened. Okay, yeah. so you're aware of that. Okay, I haven't personally heard heard of that, but I'm just saying it's people did it before, and I can imagine people not doing it now. But you know what? Let's not let's not hold back on them. 
let's, let's continually support people, uh, missions around the world. And, and so we'll be dividing this up again next year and sending it out around. And so I encourage you, everybody, to please, please, please uh, remember that. And then also, uh, we're still doing good on, on the parking lot. Uh, people are still doing great when it comes to giving. Uh, we're under 8,000 now. Uh, for what we need uh, to finish off uh, for the, about the 50,000. So we got about 42,000 that we've got uh, towards the parking lot. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just believing that we can just, you know, uh, not have to get money from anywhere else to be able to have that taken care of. Amen. How many of you guys can agree with us for that? Amen. So, so what, what I can agree with is this, is that God just totally blesses your socks off. Uh, that, that you'll be able to give in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I don't know. How many of you guys have seen... Um, uh, Jeff hires, uh, he, he's the motorcycle guy up north. So did you guys see his post on there? Uh, if, if you're not on Facebook, well, you should be on Facebook if you don't have, but on the um, church Facebook, uh, we, we did a post on there. And he has got a really big race uh, going on that he is the, he's the head promoter down in uh, Florida uh, on July 11th, I believe it is. Yeah, that Saturday. And so... Um, what he what was amazing about this is actually there's a really big uh, motorcycle racing and company that that is a pay-per-view company and they want to do a pay-per-view uh, thing with his event that's going on in Florida it's actually a pretty big deal that's going on and so uh, what he had told me is prior to him getting that he just said pastor I just want to let you know uh, he goes I know we still need some money for the parking lot and everything else and he and he said uh, what I'm going to do is, is take a percentage of, of the resources that come in from the pay-per-views and everything else, and, and I want to be able to give a big chunk towards the parking lot and everything else. And, and uh, so ju just however many people buy those, it's only like 15 bucks, but it's 15 bucks for a lot of awesome racing. He's got professional uh, people that are doing the, the broadcasting that everybody knows, and there's professional racers that are all supporting this. And so it's going to be a really, really awesome event. Uh, so I just thought that was really cool that, uh, that he was willing to uh, give some of his business proceeds uh, to the parking lot and get that done here. So I just, I'm just agreeing, uh, you know, and so you know what I did, of course, just like, like I am all of you, I said, well, I'm going to believe that, that that just blows up in Jesus' name, that, that, that there's going to be a lot of people that want to watch that and want a pay-per-view on that and, and everything else. And so he, of course, said the more that comes in, the more I can, I can give to the church of that percentage. So I'm like, praise the Lord, let's do that in Jesus' name. So uh, I like that, people owning your own business. That's a good thing, amen. Uh, everybody ought to consider it sometime. In Jesus' name, and you're never too, never too young or never too a little bit past younger to start a business. In Jesus' name, right? It's just all good. Okay, praise the Lord for that. So uh, keep, uh, keep going with that. Let's take a look at our theme for this year. Of course, 2020 is a year of, there it is, a year of harvest, amen? So just keep on believing. And remember, uh, we're not quite to the halfway point yet, but getting pretty close coming up this, this uh, next week. And so uh, how many of you guys can just believe that the second half is even going to be better than the first half in Jesus' name? Uh, you know why? Because that's just our kind of God. That's our kind of Father. And uh, as good as the first half has already been for a lot of people, uh, man, I, I'm just, I'm excited for a lot of things that are going to happen in the second half, uh, things that have been said about what should happen during this year. And I'm not just talking about f um, material financial things. I'm talking about salvations, people coming into the kingdom, people we've been believing for, things happening and so uh, open doors in Jesus' name, amen. So uh, very, very exciting about this year of harvest. I love that you taught on this the last time you taught, uh, which was before the, well, I mean, you, you tag teamed with me. Didn't she do a good job tag teaming with me? I'm telling you, that, she, that girl saved my rear end. Maybe that's not the right way to say it, but um, just because, uh, maybe I don't know if I shared this up here, or not, but you know how hard it was ministering to empty seats? I mean, thank God that we had some sound booth people back there and media people back there and stuff. But I was like, oh, man, I just uh, need some, you know, somebody with me. And, and one thing I love about my awesome wife is we, we can just feed off of each other because we just love God and can just go that way. And so that was just uh, thanks a lot. But getting back to what you were saying, uh, you were just talking about the last time you were ministering how, you know, God said this is a year of harvest. And, you know, a lot of people are thinking you got to wait to the end of the year to get the harvest. And, you know, every year meant what? It meant every month. It meant every day. It meant every, every anything. And I remember even Kim, that was, that was like in February. 
And Kim goes, oh, just think of how good God is. He even gives us a year of harvest when there's a leap year in there. He gives us an extra day in February. And, and I was like, no, that's right. That's right. I mean, how awesome is that? So anyway, I'll just keep believing in Jesus' name. All right, here we go. Isaiah does say, the, here, there it is. That's coming. Thank you. It says, the least of you will become a thousand, the smallest a mighty nation. I am the Lord in its time. I will do this swiftly. Amen. Uh, Matthew says, God's kingdom is like a pine nut that a farmer plants. It is quite small as seeds go, but... In the course of years, it grows into a huge pine tree and eagles build nest in it. Amen. And you're all eagles in Jesus' name, right? You're all eagles soaring in Jesus' name. And I love that about you. And as Brother Jason had told me, some of you are more patriotic than others, right? Some of you are bald eagles. And uh, however you want to work it, you can work it. Amen. In Jesus' name. All right. Let's, uh, let's say this together while we're here at Forgiven Church. Forgiven Church is here to love God, to love others, and to discover and develop the greatness that's within each one of us. Period. Yes, there's greatness inside of every single one of you. Okay. Does everybody have a handout for tonight? Yes. Anybody missing one? Does anybody need one? We need some, one back there, one over here. All right. Over there, over there. Anybody else over here? All right, anybody else? Okay, how about everybody, does everybody have something to write with? Anybody not have anything to write with? Okay, one right here, we need somebody up here. All right, anybody else? We all good? Highlighter, right? Okay, very good, very good. So, tonight what we're going to be talking about, of course, we are still in the Believer's Authority uh, lessons, uh, what you didn't learn in church, or we'll just put what most churches don't teach when it comes to the authority that we have in Christ Jesus. And the thing about it is, is as we've said before, uh, it's amazing that this is all right here in the Bible, yet so many people in the body of Christ has no clue when it comes to the authority of a believer. And you know what that really tells me is that people don't read their Bible. I, I just shoot straight with you. I just, that's kind of what that tells me is people just not reading their Bible because I love it when you hear about people who are ministers, people who, uh, who um, God just gave a great revelation to and they said, I was just reading the Bible for myself. I was reading the Bible for myself and all of a sudden I got a revelation of this, 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 and this. Amen. How many of you guys know Holy Spirit will do that? Amen. Amen. He'll do that, but you got to do what? You got to be reading the word of God. Amen. Very, very, very important. So here we go. Now what we're going to be talking about tonight, what we're going to be talking about tonight is something that, how do I say this the right way? It's something that a lot of people, they just really don't believe. They really will just say, oh, I, I don't know about that. That's just not for me. That's for this. That's for that. No, it's, it's actually for somebody. And just because, it's okay, Blanca. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Should, should we put the shotgun video up there again? You guys, you guys remember the shotgun video? Remember when the fun, they launch them and the girls were all blowing the shotguns away? Okay, all right. Or blowing the uh, cell phones away. But a lot of people, they do not believe in demonic activity. Now, how many of you guys know there is a real enemy? There is a devil, there are demons, and there are entities out there that do not want you to succeed. And the thing about it is, is whether you believe in them or not, Jesus believes in them. Jesus said they are real. But the great thing about it is when we're talking about our authority is Jesus gave you authority over them. Amen? And see, there are some people, they don't realize that some stuff that they're dealing with could be dealing with demonic activity, and they have no idea. Okay, so let's go ahead and read this tonight, and then, we're, of course, we are going to be able to break it down. We'll add scriptures on the second uh, way through. Here we go. God has given us power and authority over the devil. God gave us power and authority over all devils, and all means all. We aren't going to get freed from Satan's harassment by praying and asking God to remove the devil. The power and authority has been given to us. We have to resist the devil. Resist means to actively fight against. 
Resistance is active. The godly, or excuse me, the godly use of anger is to be mad at the devil, mad at sickness, mad at disease, and mad at poverty. When we get angry and resist the devil, he's just like a bully. The moment he knows it's going to cost him something, that's when we're going to stand there toe-to-toe in the name of Jesus and go at it with him, and Satan will flee from us. We don't resist the devil by saying, Dear devil, please leave me alone. God gave us power and authority and we have to activate it by stirring ourselves up, becoming violently resolved and just putting a spiritual foot down by saying, Satan, get out of my life. God isn't going to rebuke the devil for us. If we resist the devil, he will flee from us. If we are dealing with demonic oppression, then we have to step up to the plate, take the authority God has given us, and command the devil to flee. There are two sides to this coin, submitting to God and resisting the devil. We can't just go around binding and rebuking anything we want. These truths concerning authority will only work for us when we are submitted to God. When we are seeking Him with our whole hearts and we perceive the devil hindering us, then we can take our authority and command those things to change. When we are submitted to God, then we can resist the devil, actively fight against him, and he will flee from us. Since God has given us this power and authority, we also have the responsibility to exercise it. We can't go back to God and beg Him to do what He has commanded us to do. We must pray, speak, and act in line with the authority God has given us. If we do what the Word says, we'll see His power manifest, and then we'll have all the revival we can handle. Amen? Amen. And of course, we're now we're going to add the Scriptures here just so you know that we're telling the truth. Uh, to this. Oh yeah, by the way, I want to welcome everybody who's watching live, whether you're live right now or watching in the future. It is great to have you here with us tonight. So uh, here we go. God has given us power and authority over the devil. Here we go. James 4, 7. Look what it says. It says, submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Right? Next says this. So give yourselves humbly to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Next says, so let God work his will in you. Yell a loud no to the devil and watch him scamper. The Amplified says, so be subject to God, resist the devil, stand firm against him, and he will flee from you. Now, if you remember, we've talked about this before But remember, we need to resist the devil, not assist the devil. Okay, we need to resist the devil, not assist the devil. And as I said last night at our branch up in Fort Wayne, and I've said it before, there are a lot of Christians that are assisting the devil and not knowing they're assisting the devil. The Bible, of course, says my people perish for lack of knowledge or what? Or rejecting knowledge, right? Well, a lot of times we're, we have no idea that we're actually helping the devil out and don't even know it. Remember what we've talked about when it came to the authority of the believer? Remember, Satan has no authority except for what? Exactly. Oh, man, you all paid attention. You are so awesome. You get a star on the chart. Right on. Right. He only has authority and power in what we give him. Right? Because it's actually all been given to us, right? Moving right along. God gave us power and authority over all devils and all means all, right? Luke 9 1, look what it says here. When Jesus had called the 12 together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases, right? One day, Jesus called together his 12 apostles and gave them authority over all demons, power to cast them out, and to heal all diseases, right? 
Jesus now called the 12 and gave them authority and power to deal with all the demons and cure diseases. And the Amplified does say this. Then Jesus called together the 12 apostles and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure all diseases. Question for you, does that still include COVID-19? Yes. Of course it does. All demons, all diseases, right? And remember, Jesus said, go and make disciples and teach them to obey what? Everything or all things that I commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age, right? I love what my wife said several years ago, if you remember, and you actually can see it on her, her ministry website at the end of her video uh, intro clip that she has on there when she was actually teaching here. And she said, you wonder why the devil flees when he sees you? Because it's not just you he sees, but it's everybody else he sees that's behind you. See, how many of you guys know Jesus is the head, we are the body, right? He is the head of the church, we are the body. And just as the disciples were a part of the church when the church began, the same thing applies to all of us, amen? Now, when it comes to demonic activity, though, the same thing. The same power that they used to cast devils out and the same name that they used to cast devils out, we have the exact same ability. Now, let me, by a raise of hands, I'm just going to ask everybody here and just be honest here. How many of you have ever seen demonic activity? Anybody at all? Okay, so we've seen a couple, a couple people. Okay, I know I have. My wife has. Okay, a couple, a couple other people have. Okay, now, a lot of people actually have not seen demonic activity. And I'm going to say something, and, and some people may not agree with this, and that's okay. But... If you look in the Bible and you read in the Bible, do you notice that when Jesus showed up on the scenes, the devils just manifested? Right? When Jesus showed up, the spirits that were against him, the demonic spirits, knew who he was. And they knew that Jesus knew who he was. And because they knew he knew who he was, they didn't like it. And they knew there's a really good chance they were in trouble. Right? You can even see it where Jesus cast out a devil in the synagogue. You remember that? Right? And see, the thing about it is, is see, a lot of people and a lot of even Christians, they've never seen demonic activity. Well, the thing about it is, is they've never seen it because they don't see a lot of it manifest because when they go to church, they have nothing to be concerned about. See, if a devil comes in this place, it better start freaking out. You know why? Because I know there's some people that are in here that know who they are in Christ. Amen. See, you don't have to go looking for it. You just show up and it will start manifesting. You know why? Because the Spirit of God is in you and you understand the authority of the believer. Doesn't make you any better than anybody, but it means you've got some revelation. And they know that you know. Are, are, are y'all with me on that? Yeah. And it, like I said, it doesn't make you any better. But see, the thing about it is, is and, and I, it's just, it is what it is. There's a lot of devils going to churches today. And they're going and they they letting you sing them songs. Because they know there's nothing going to happen. That's not saying anything bad about them. What it's saying is that the people have got lack of revelation. And so if it's happened in the Bible, I can guarantee you it's probably happening today. Amen. So well, let's continue reading. It says this. Uh, we are going to get freed from Satan's harassment by praying and asking God to remove the devil. That power and authority has been given to us. Right. So at the end of that, let's go ahead and ask a couple of general questions is what has God given us over the devil? Power. Right. Power and authority these two things god has given us power and authority or jesus has right jesus is the head of the church and how many of you guys know jesus is not going to say you're going to do what i'm going to do but you're not going to have what i have how many of you guys know jesus knew that he had to give us what he has to be able to do the job that he did 
right? Amen. And of course, the number one thing that we have is the name of Jesus. We were singing about it tonight during worship, right? The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the name above all names, right? During the first song, man, you're the name above all names. And every knee has to bow to the name of Jesus. Amen. But I like how it says in there that power and authority has been given to us. It says this in the, in the next section. Let's go ahead and go into that. We have to resist the devil. Resist means to actively fight against. Resistance is active. The godly use of anger is to be mad at the devil, mad at sickness, mad at disease, and mad at poverty. When we get angry and resist the devil, he is just like a bully. The moment he knows he's going to, it's going to cost him something, that is when they're going to stand there toe-to-toe -to -toe in the name of Jesus and go at it with him, and Satan will flee from us. Now, how many of you guys know we have to do what Jesus did, right? And I'm not talking about physically throwing punches, right? What we're talking about is using the word just like Jesus did. Remember when Satan tempted Jesus and, 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 and Satan would try to use the word, but Jesus would say, it is written, it is written, it is written, right? He used the word to defeat the enemy. Now, just as there are ranking angels in heaven. How many of you guys know there's ranking angels in heaven, right? There are some angels that have more authority and support. That's the way God has it, just like a military, right? It's kind of like you got angels are like that too. Well, remember, a third of the angels are gone, right? They're, they're demonic activity or demonic spirits. There are ranking angels or ranking demons also, okay? And the one reason I say that is this. There are some demons, some devils out there that will fight you longer than others. Okay? Which some demons, you can tell them to go in the name of Jesus and they'll be gone. But there will be others that will, I don't want to call them stronger, I don't want to call them more stern, uh, a little more whatever, but... Uh, it takes a little more umph to get them out or to let them know that you're serious, okay? Um, I remember talking with somebody not too long ago. Actually, it was about a week ago about this exact same thing. A person uh, ended up contacting me on, on Messenger and had told me, they said, I need you to give me some help on this. This, I've been dealing with demonic activity for several months in my house now. And I said, okay, really? I said, uh, I said, well, why don't you take your authority and deal with it? And this person said, I have. The problem is it keeps coming back about every other day. I keep dealing with this demonic presence. And it got to the point where I literally, he said, he said, I literally heard it say, if you don't stop doing this, I'm going to kill your family. Well, I told this person, I said, let me explain something to you. I said, you're dealing with one of those demons that don't believe you believe in what you're saying. And I told this person, how many of you guys know we're all servants of Christ? Amen? We're all servants. But how many of you guys know we're also warriors? Yes. Amen. And I told him, I said, dude, I said, you are a brother of the king. I said, you are a part of royal family. And I said, you need to let that warrior that's inside you that God created rise up and deal with the situation. I said, if anyone or anything has ever would ever threaten my family, I would make sure that's the end of that situation and that thing. And then I told him the situation of that I, I've shared it before. Maybe, maybe some of you haven't heard it, but I'll share it really quick. That situation with um, uh, Brother Jerry Savell when he was with Kenneth Copeland. And the situation was this is Brother Jerry Savell was serving Brother Kenneth Copeland, and they were at a big meeting one time. And how many of you guys know devils like to disrupt? Yeah. 
they like to create a, a problem. And, and basically what ended up happening is Kevin or Kenneth started ministering. He started doing this. And then a, a demon-possessed person, uh, like on the second row, started doing all this stuff. And it was a lady. And so, so Jerry is like, oh, cool. I get to watch Kenneth cast out another devil. All right. And, he, and this is what he said. Some of you guys remember. He says, Jerry... Get some ushers, get over here, grab this demon-possessed person and go out, take them out there and cast the devil out of them. And he was like, me? You want me to do this? He's like, but you're the preacher. You're the one that's supposed to do it. So to make a long story short, some ushers came. How many of you guys know uh, demonic spirits can give very strong strength to, to, to people? And, and so it took like four ushers to get this lady this demonic possessed lady out of the sanctuary. And then you know what? After they got her out down the hall into another room, wasn't it another room, honey? Then, then Kenneth goes on preaching. He continues going on while Jerry's in another room dealing with this demon possessed lady. And so what he basically did is it was like two or three times he kept telling the devil to leave in the name of Jesus. And nothing happened. And then finally the stupid demon told Jerry what the problem was. The demon looked right at him through that person and said, you don't believe what you're saying. Well, what ended up happening is that ticked Jerry off because the reality was that devil was right. But there was a righteous anger that rose up inside yeah. of him. And all of a sudden, he, he was just like, man. And then he's just like, in the name. I mean, he didn't even get to finish it. That devil was like, oh, crud. Oh, man. Oh, I just told him what the problem was. By the time he was done, that faith, that everything rose up inside of him, that authority rose up, and that devil was gone. You right? See, and see, the thing about it is, is some demons are not going to leave the situation if they don't think you know who you are. But when they know you know who you are in Christ Jesus, it has no chance. There is no devil in hell, even Lucifer himself, that can't compete against the name of Jesus and someone who knows who they are in the name of Jesus. Amen. Not one at all. And the thing about it is, is like we've already been talking, there are so many Christians that are telling and asking God to do something when he commanded us to do it. Amen. God is not, our father is not going to do something he told his children to do. It's just, it's all Bible. And people are wondering, why isn't God? Why isn't God? And God's up there going, why aren't you? Why aren't you? Why don't you just do what I told you to do? God, would you just get rid of this opposition, this devil? This, would you just please get And he's like, it's your job. Let me tell you about a situation you remember in the Bible. You remember, you remember when Paul was talking to Jesus. And he said this. There is a messenger sent by Satan. You remember that? Yeah. And he was asking the Lord to deal with it. Remember? And what did the Lord say right after that to Paul? He said, what? Somebody said it. Jesus, huh? No, no, that's not, no, no, that's not it. No, he, he, goes, there's, he goes, there's a messenger sent by Satan. He goes, would you please deal with this? And then he said, my grace is sufficient. Now, most people, you know how they interpret that? There is grace for you to tolerate it and to deal with it for the rest of your life. There's enough that God's telling you to deal with this issue, this messenger sent by Satan. His grace is sufficient for you to handle it and to tolerate it. For it. That is not what that means. How many of you guys know God's grace is his ability getting in your, in your life to be able to deal with situations? When he says, my grace is sufficient for you, it means I've already given you enough ability, enough authority to deal with the situation yourself. Look it up. But see, most people, they don't read it that way. Right. But he says, my grace that I've already given you is sufficient for you to deal with the situation. That's good news, people. Yeah. And how many guys know we're all under grace? Yeah. It's all grace. for. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's absolutely awesome, right? Uh, where are we at on here? Uh, I think we finished that, right? 
second section. So a couple general questions on the second session is, what does resist mean? It means to what? Right, actively fight, which means actively stand your ground, stand your ground on the word, right? If you get pushed over, you do what? You get back up. A righteous person gets back up Amen. over and over and over again. Amen. Amen. You may get knocked down, but you are not knocked out. Okay? Now, a lot of Christians, I'm, and it just is what it is. We, many times, we've talked about it before, many times we assist the devil in things. And because we assist him, then we're giving him an upper hand to take advantage of us. But when you know who you are in Christ and you know the word just like Jesus did, you can stand your ground and eventually the devil will leave like we read in the scriptures. Amen. Very important. Uh, next one says this. The godly use of anger is to be mad at what four things that we talked about on here? Do we mad at what? The devil. The devil what right? And poverty. and poverty, right. Some of you got to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. And quit saying it's God's will for you. My Bible says above all things he prays that you, or he believes that you would what? Prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers, right? As we get our minds renewed and we realize what God has actually done for us, right? And that everything that pertains to life and godliness through Christ Jesus has already been sent. Come on. That totally changes the ball game. Yeah. Amen? And we have got to get fed up with everything that everybody has settled with for too long. Jesus never settled with sickness and disease. He never settled with poverty. He never settled with any, you know, he never settled with a devil, any of that stuff. He always took authority over the situations. Amen. That's just absolutely awesome. Here we go. Uh, third uh, section here is this. We don't resist the devil by saying, dear devil, please leave me alone. Right? God gave us power and authority and we have to activate it by stirring ourselves up, becoming violently resolved. Matthew eleven twelve. 12, look what it says here. It says, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subject to violence and the violent people have been raiding it or going after it. The Amplified says this. And from the days of John the Baptist until the present time, the kingdom of heaven has endured violent assault and violent men seize it by force as a precious prize. A share in the heavenly kingdom is sought with most ardent zeal and intense exertion. Man, how many of you guys know we got we to gotta have some attitude about what we're doing? Right. Amen. We got to be we got to we got to be more aggressive than the enemy that's coming after us. I'm just, look, I'm just here to tell you, the enemy does not know your future. Only God is all-knowing, yeah. right? But I can tell you this, he can hear when you're praying. He knows what you're saying. He knows if you're spirit-filled or not. And I'm telling you something, the moment you start believing God for something, the moment he's going to start going after you. How many of you, how many of you by raising your hands? Because it, it happens almost all the time. All of a sudden, you'll believe God for a financial breakthrough or you'll start believing God for finances. Next thing you know, some bill comes out of nowhere or some financial something comes, right? And you're like, where did that come from? Or you're, or you're trusting God for, for healing. Or you're trust, and all of a sudden, next thing you know, you get symptoms like you've never had before in your life. Yeah. Right? The whole thing the enemy's trying to do is discourage you yeah. from believing the word of God. Yeah. But those who prevail... They're going to see what God's word says in Jesus' name. Amen. And sometimes you just got to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. Kind of like this, which, which is what you were saying, Bobby. The, the seven sons of Sceva, right? Remember that? Where, where the demon came out and this person was like trying to cast the devil out, right? And, and the devil says, Jesus we know and Paul we know. But then what did he say? But who are you? And remember what happened after that? That dude got a severe beating, right? See, see what, you know what ought to happen for everybody at Forgiven Church, whether it's here or North? Actually, it ought to happen for every Christian. They ought to sit there and say, 
Dave I know, Judy I know, Angela I know, Don I know, Larry I know, John I know, right? That's what they ought to know because, see, they will know who you are if you know who you are. See, the last thing you want to sit there and do is say, well, I believe in the God that Pastor Scott serves. That ain't going to help you anything at all. It needs to be the God that you say you serve, the God that you say you know. Amen? It's all about a personal relationship, right? And, and oh, okay, let me just jump right in there, okay? So remember this. We talked about it earlier that every demon has to submit to the name of Jesus, right? But remember the situation in the Bible where uh, the guy brought his son to, the, to uh, the disciples and they couldn't drive the devil out, right? But then Jesus shows up on the scene and casts the devil out, right? And then the disciples said, why couldn't we do it, right? My, my, my wife and I were teaching about this during the COVID-19. Do you remember this? And what did Jesus say? He said, this kind only comes out by prayer. Right, prayer and fasting, right? Some say fasting, some say prayer, some say prayer and fasting, right? Now, the thing about it is, is you know what people are thinking? Oh, if I fast and I pray, it's going to affect that thing. If I fast and I pray, it's going to affect that. That is not what fasting and prayer does. Fasting and prayer only affects one person, and that is the person who is fasting and praying. Because when you fast and you pray, it makes you closer to God. It builds your relationship. When you fast and you pray, you get closer to him. You start realizing who you are as a son of God. You start understanding this authority. And see, Jesus said, if you fasted and prayed more and had a better relationship with the Father, you'd be casting this thing out just like I'm casting it out. That's what he was saying. But you see all these signs out there? You know all these signs? Now, don't take everybody. Don't, group hug. Love me. Okay, love me, love me, love me. Okay. But you know these signs that are out there? That it's like pray and fast to end abortion. Praying and fasting is not going to end abortion. Praying and fasting is for the people that are doing it. Praying and fasting is not going to stop abortion, just like praying and fasting is not going to weaken a devil. What it's going to do is make you stronger, make you realize who you are in Christ to be able to deal with that devil, if that makes any sense. Right? Is, is that clear with everybody? Okay. Okay. Is this good for you guys or is it good for me too? All right, all right. Can I just pray that you run into a lot of devils? No, I won't do No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We don't, you don't do that. You don't do that. I'm just kidding. Right? We don't go devil hunting. That's stupid. That's like those shows. Have you guys seen those shows on TV? I was talking about this last night up there. You ever see those haunted house shows or those, the devil, what do they call those shows? Ghost hunters. Yeah. Go Man, what is up with that stuff? They got all these devices that they think can deal with the spiritual realm, you know, and it's all of a sudden, do something if you're here. <gasps> Did you hear that? It was a click. It was, you know, it was, I'm, come on. You know, and then if there's a devil that shows up or something that shows up, they're like, oh, freaking out, you know? I mean, it's just really weird. I don't understand that stuff. I don't know why you'd want to go hunt for that stuff anyways, in Jesus' name, amen? Praise the Lord. Uh, moving right along, uh, says this. Uh, yeah, we went over the scriptures, right? And just putting a spiritual foot down by saying, Satan, get out of my life. God isn't going to rebuke the devil for us. If we resist the devil, he will flee from us. That's what we read in James 4, 7. If we are dealing with demonic opposition, then we have to step up to the plate, take authority that God has given us, and command the devil to flee, right? Okay, so based on what we just read, will God rebuke the devil for us? Then why do we ask him to do it? Lack of knowledge, isn't it? it? You know, it seems like the right thing to do, doesn't it? Yeah. Jesus, you're the one that can do it, so would you please do it? But he's also saying, but you're the ones that can do it too, right? Okay, and then, uh, of course, the last one is uh, basically, if we're dealing with demonic opposition, then we need to do what? We need to step up to the... Take, take what? Authority. That God is what? And command, there you go, look at you, isn't it nice to have this stuff you can take home with you? Here we go, moving right along, section four. 
There are two sides to this coin, submitting to God and resisting the devil. We can't just go around binding and rebuking anything we want. These truths concerning authority will only work for us when we are submitted to God. That's kind of like the example when I talk about the seven sons of Sceva, right? You know, I, I'm casting you out in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. That is not going to work, right? You've got to have your own relationship with the Lord. When we are seeking him with our whole hearts and we perceive the devil hindering us, then we can take our authority and command those things to change. When we are submitted to God, then we can resist the devil, actively fight against him, and he will flee from us, right? Mark 1, 25. Look what it says here. Mark 1, 25. And this is Jesus. If you remember, Jesus was saying this to the, to the devil. Be quiet. Jesus said sternly, come out of him, right? Next translation says, it says, Jesus curtly, right? Is that right? Curtly commanded the demon to say no more and to come out of the man. Do you know what that word means? Shirtly. Shirt, oh, shirtly? Shirtly. Shirt, oh, shirt, oh, no, curtly, yeah. Yeah, do you, do you know what that means? It means that, now some people would not say, oh, Jesus would not be like this. It means to be extremely rude. Absurd. It means to be blunt and to the point. That's what that means. See, now a lot of people, oh, not the loving Jesus that I serve would never. I mean, he's so nice, he's nice to the devils. I don't think so. I think Jesus let him have it. How many of you guys would say Jesus let them have it, right? You know what? If Jesus would call the Pharisees and Sadducees snakes and vipers and all the others, I think he'll deal with the devil. You, you know what I'm talking about? I don't think Jesus is interested in being nice to the enemy. And so we should not be also. I think, I, let me, now, maybe you've never thought this, but I, um, I actually uh, had heard about this. Do you know there are some people that will not take their authority like we're talking about tonight because they're afraid of ticking the devil off? Seriously, you know why they're afraid? They're afraid, oh, well, if I make him even more upset, things are going to get even worse. <laughs> Look. All right, you figure it out. I'm just, that is just, some, people, I've, they think that. I don't want to take him off even more than he is. I mean, I mean, it's kind of like that person that, that I was talking with this past week that, that told me, they said, I literally heard a voice tell me, if you don't stop doing this, I'm going to kill your family. So basically, he said he stopped doing it. And then, he called, and, he, and then he sent me information for help. I said, dude, you need to get sick and tired. I mean, I said, you got to let that, that demonic situation you're dealing with, and you got to rise up, be that warrior. And it was so awesome, man. I, I, how, would I, I, I just, how would I say this? I, I was aggressive in what I was texting him back. Yeah. I, 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 said, I said, dude, excuse what I'm about to say, but you need to... And... I, and, I, and Man, he's like, yeah, man, I feel so much faith right now. I'm ready to deal with it. I'm like, that's right, man. That's what you got to do. You know, <laughs> so I was just, I was serious with him. And he's like, I'm dealing with this right now. And see, the thing about it was, is that enemy was trying to get him in what? Fear. Because right. how many guys know if you get in fear, it's the opposite of faith. And faith is the only way to please God. Faith is the only way to, to deal with our authority. It's the only way to deal with the power that God has given us, right? That's where our power comes from is God. And it's all by faith. So, man, I, I, got, I can't wait to hear what happened to, to the situation. So, praise the Lord. Here we go. Moving right along our last section. Since God has given us this power and authority, we also have the responsibility to exercise it, Right? Okay, I was about to say something, but okay. Anyhow. I almost got political on this, but anyhow, here we go. We can't go back to God and beg Him to do what He has commanded us to do. We must pray, speak, and act in line with the authority God has given us. If we do what the word says, we'll see his power manifest. Then we'll have all the revival we can handle. Amen, 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 right? 
So basically, a couple general questions on this before we're done is what must we do in line with God's authority that he's given us? We must do three things. We must what? Pray, Pray speak, speak, and act. And act. Right, exactly. And then if, the, and if we do what the word says, we'll see what? His what? Power. Right. His power manifests. Because that's what we want to see, right? We want to see the power of God. We want to see the super deal with the, whatever is going on in this realm. Amen. Now, let me say something uh, really quick also. There are some people, now, now how many, we've, I think we're all pretty convinced there are devils out there, there are demons, there, it, there, we do have enemies out there, Jesus says that we do, and that's why he gave us power and authority to deal with them, amen? But I just want to let you know, and I've, it's like I said here before, and maybe some of you who might be newer, you haven't heard me say this, just because something goes bad in your life or something bad happens, or, or it's not, it doesn't mean there's a devil behind it. There's only so many devils. Okay, so it's like I've said before, if somebody comes up to me and say, the devil's bothering me. Well, that's good because then he can't bother me because there's only one of him. <laughs> there's only so many demons, right? Right. But everything is not. I mean, I mean, man, if your radio finally died. Don't rebuke the devil off the radio because you don't want to go spend another 20 bucks and get a new one. You know what I'm saying? If you're if you're going to church, you get a flat tire. You know, don't blame the devil. Don't give him any credit that he doesn't need to have. Amen. You know, why don't you get out and look and there's a good chance you ran over a nail. Right? Now, I know super spiritual people would say, well, the devil put it there for me to run over. <laughs> look, let's not over spiritualize this thing. Okay, everybody. You know, I mean, because we talked about this tonight, like, I said, don't go looking for devils. Don't think there's a devil on everything. You know, I know some of us think when our, when our computer crashes, it had a devil, you know, because you didn't back it up like Jesus does, you know. I mean, you, you know, you've heard that one, right? You haven't, you don't know what I'm talking about? Oh, come on. You, you don't remember, remember Jesus and, the, and, 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 and Jesus and Satan, they were doing a, a project before God and, and, and Satan kept saying he was better at Jesus and he, and he could do things better than Jesus and all this other kind of stuff. So he's like, fine, let's get a computer thing going. Let's get it going on, right? So he says, here's a project. You got to do it and you've got to do it in a certain amount of time, right? And so the devil's like, yeah, man, Jesus, you were going down, man. So they got it going on and a couple hours went into it and all of a sudden God pulled the plug. And the devil had a fit. He's like, that's not fair. That's not fair. I lost everything. And Jesus is like, that's your problem. And he's like, that's not fair. And he goes, well, Jesus saves. So hey, that's all right. <laughs> okay, clean joke, clean joke, clean joke. All right. You should save and back up on your computer, people. Amen. All right. I have dealt with crashing computers before, but I did not blame the devil. Right? Y'all follow me on that? The devil is not behind. There's only so many devil demons. There's one devil, but there's only so many demons to go around. Okay? If they're all dealing with you, then that's better for all of us because then you got them all, right? So let's, let's not give them any more credit than he deserves. And how many guys know he actually deserves no credit? Right? But, but if you're literally, if you're dealing with it or somebody else is dealing with this, look, if there's anybody they ought to call, they ought to be calling you. Amen? They ought to know that you know who you are in Christ. I've, I've, we've had, how many times have we had this happen? I, I had a person, well, it was, it was, well, it was probably like eight, nine years ago or something like that, that I remember a person called me here, doesn't go to our church, and said that they had total demonic activity going on, getting hit during the middle of the night, all this waking up with bruises, all the freaking out, and he calls me. And I'm like, what are you calling me for? Because I know you know how to deal with it. And I'm like, yeah, but you're saved. Why aren't you doing it? And, and, and I hate to say, this person went to another church. I'm like, why don't you call your pastor? Why are you calling me? And, and what he said is, he goes, my pastor doesn't believe like you do. And I'm like, well, that just stinks. Yeah. You know, because every pastor, every Christian ought to know who they are in Christ. Amen. Everybody ought to know about the authority of the believer, right? See, I, I love it when Jesus said, everything that I did, you're going to do also. Remember, we even talked about this past, not this past week, but the week before, that these signs shall follow those who believe. One of them is what? They will cast out devils. 
If you're a believer, guess what? You're going to be casting out devils. You know why? Because you know the authority that you have in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. You guys get anything out of that tonight? Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you and I praise you for every single person that is in this place. Everybody that is watching live on social media, whether it's now or in the future. Lord, I thank you for revelation from your word. And I just thank you that the spirit of God just rises up inside of us. That we know who we are in Christ Jesus not in a prideful way but in a, 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 a pride a, a, but in a way of humility Lord humbling ourselves and realizing what you have actually done for us Lord that we are not just humans we are not just saved but we are children of the most high God our big brother is the king of kings and the Lord of lords and he has instructed us to do what he has done and to deal with things the way he dealt with things that your glory would just be manifested all over this earth and so tonight this night once again we give you all the thanks the praise the honor and the glory in jesus name and all the saints of god said amen, amen. hallelujah all right well god is good all and all the time Hallelujah, right? How many of you guys know God loves cheerful givers in Jesus' name? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's prepare for tithes and offerings tonight. And, and like I say, uh, if you want to give towards the parking lot out there, uh, we've got it already lined up, but we still need, of course, a few thousand more to go. So uh, if you want to give towards that, you can do so in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And then we got a good, is this the same video we watched last night? All right, we got a funny video for you guys to watch also during tithes and offerings. This is good. Hallelujah. Who else? Who else? Anybody else need one? Everybody good? All right. Let's go ahead and watch that, and then we will pass the offering buckets. The first lady in the line, she walks up to me, and she goes, would you put your favorite Bible verse under your name for me? Just your name and then put your five, favorite Bible verse on your name. Did you do that? Well, uh, okay. Um, sure. Well, my favorite Bible verse is Psalm 34, verse 8. It says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. That was my favorite verse. But that night, I forgot the verse. I just blanked on it. You know how sometimes, you, you know, like, sir, when you dress today. You know what I'm talking about? It's like your brain is... Yeah, it's just not working. <laughs> so I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, it's, it's Psalm something. I got to pick something. And I said, oh, I'll just have to make up a verse here. <laughs> so I did. I picked Psalm, Psalm 38, verse 7. Just picked it out of thin air. Psalm 38, 7. Okay, I did it. Like an idiot, I did them all that way. Tim Hawkins, Psalm 38, 7. Hope you enjoyed the show. <laughs> so I'm driving home that night. I'm like, oh, Lord, I hope that was a good verse. <laughs> Oh, Lord, could you change the scripture if it's not just for one night? But he did not hear my prayer. So I get home and I look up Psalm 38, verse 7. And to my horror, it says, Lo, I have a painful disease in my loins. And I signed it a hundred times and sent it out in my own little mission field. Go! Take the word! Don't forget my loin problem! Build schools and hospitals! Don't forget my loin disease! Because you know those people looked it up. You know they did. They probably made a big deal out of it. Come on here, sit down, kids. Sit down, we're gonna read this first. Turn the TV off. Get over here. Here it is, Psalm 38, seven, shh. It's his life first, shh. It says, lo, I have a painful disease. I shook his hand. I shook his hand.
How many of you guys know it's good to know your Bible? Amen. Yeah, all right. That's pretty funny. All right, did everybody give an opportunity to give that would like to? Yes? All right, come on up, gentlemen. Let's give thanks one more time. Looking good tonight? Looking good yourself? Yeah, all right. Once again, Father, we glorify you. We magnify you with these tithes and these offerings. We honor you with them right now, and we thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity that this is to be able to sow into your kingdom. And I also thank you for the promise that you have according to these, that you said that you would multiply these, multiply them 30, 60, 100 fold. Lord, Lord, I even thank you for the thousand fold blessing multiplication uh, on these. And I thank you also that you said it is more blessed to give than receive. And so, Lord, as we are giving to you, I thank you that we can't outgive you. And so I thank you for the continual wisdom of spending these resources wisely and also uh, the wisdom to spend all the rest of our own personal resources wisely that, that all we do with all we have, we would always glorify you. And we just ask you now once again in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God's good. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right.